I would uh, I would argue that them being unhappy with the body that God gave them, right, is uh, yes, is, is like so, ungratefulness. Right. Sure. So my question is, why don't you make this same argument for people that take antidepressants? Well, because they're not like changing their body or whatever. Yeah, they are. They're literally taking medication to change their brain chemistry. Okay, I just want to know how uh, you're doing today. Um, not too great, personally. Not too great? No, because I'm arguing with extreme extremists. So, oh, wow. Yeah, so let's get back to the conversation we were having before. I guess I stole Christmas, man. I'm sorry. It's okay. You know, it's I'll, okay. I'll, Trump I'll, can save it. I'll try to get that holiday cheer back, but uh, yeah, would you consider fine. yourself a groiper? No. Okay, so you're literally like just someone who sometimes casually watches Nick Fuentes. Uh, yeah, I just I just agree with a lot of his stuff, um, but you know I'm not like a I'm not a larper. You're not a larper, okay? Yeah, so, I don't know Nick Fuentes. He's sometimes cringe. He goes out to uh, you probably seen one of his gatherings, in which he's just walking down the street doing nothing, and they're you know yeah thinking they're gonna change the world. Yeah, exactly, and it's just like a bunch of it's kind of cringy. Yeah, I know. Around him. Yeah, it's. So, okay, well, let's talk a little bit about, again, the uh, the LGBT stuff, but you can't tone police me, all right? You can't start I yelling. Just, okay. when, I, when I, you have to understand that when I talk, I'm also talking to my stream, and I'm also talking to, I, I'm also, I get passionate when I talk about right. things that I am passionate about, and I tend to get a little bit loud, and I sound aggressive, even though I'm not trying to, like, scream at you. So, let's just mm -hmm. try to, we'll try to take it easy, all right? So, I Let's just want to give you my, my side of the coin, right? Um, from my perspective, I've always found that people who sort of have that tone, even like un unconsciously sort of take opposition to your position because it's just sort of human psychology. When you're, you know, against the idea the initially, chair, so. you're not going to want to be convinced yeah. of it, right? Sure, sure. yeah. Yeah, no, I, I can understand that, yeah. Um, the aggressive approach works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. So, right. Let's, uh, let's talk about it then. So you are, uh, I just wanted to start by prefacing we know this something because I did, uh, tune into your stream after, uh, you were done talking to me about when I, when I got back home, cause I was outside. Um, you said that some of my views were, uh, fascistic because it doesn't hold up to my rigid Christian standards of what morality should be like. Um, I can look into the, uh, the 14 points of fascism. Uh, we can talk about that, right. but I wasn't really interested in talking to you about fa like fascism. I'm not. I don't plan on throwing. I just want to know how I was really like fight. fascist. Like I don't know if I came off as fascistic or not. Well, when you talk about how like the institution of marriage is invalid because it doesn't meet your religious values, that's kind of what I was getting at, more or less. But I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to like accuse you of anything. I already right. know you're anti-LGBT, uh, and you sound like you're generally a conservative. So I think that. <clears throat> excuse me. I think that I would from say there I'm a we can... paleo conservative. Okay, so a paleo conservative. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So why don't you go ahead and give me your uh, your position? Um. Well, my position, I, uh, I, it wasn't always like this, but I do derive my position from my religious beliefs, right, and from my belief or not belief rather, but knowledge that God does exist, right, and I think that. If I know other people are unrighteous, you know, I'm unrighteous as well, but if I know certain things are unrighteous, you know, what's the point in playing along with it? There's no really, there's really no point if so you know that the other person's like sort of wrong. Sure. So your morals derive from religion. So you feel religion condemn or Christianity in this case condemns um, <clears throat> LGBT, trans people, all that kind of shit. So this is where you're sort of gauging your morals from. I get that. But the problem mm -hmm. is when you talk about deriving your morals from religion, not yeah. everybody, one, agrees with that religion. And two, yeah. how do you actually know that you know that God is real? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, on the most fundamental level, um, people sort of have to have. Sorry, you cut out what? But not to exist. Right. Um, I'm sure. Oh, sorry. Am I lagging out? You lagged out for a second there. Could you repeat that? Give me a second. Yeah. So anyways, on the most fundamental level, 
people need to understand that it's impossible for there to be no God. I'm sure you've heard of uh, something called the cause and effect argument in which it is physically impossible for there not to be a supernatural force that created this universe. So what do you um, do then? I under, I get that too. So what do you do then if there, let's say there's someone who believes that as well, but they come to a different conclusion about LGBT people? How do you know that LGBT people being bad is necessarily wrong? Um, well, I, I know it's necessarily wrong because um, the Bible is it's inspired by the Holy Spirit, which means it is like actually the word of God. <clears throat> right. It derives but how directly do you know from that? him. Like there, Sorry, there are, like it, historically, there have been parts of the Bible that have been taken out or revised or changed even. How do you necessarily know that even? Well, first of all, I, I think it's important to look at the uh, the specific type of Bible that we're reading out of. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm not a Catholic myself. I'm explicitly anti-Catholic, actually, because, you know, I do see them changing their Bibles and I do see them ripping out pieces of the Bible trying to uh, idolize Mary and stuff like that. It's it's purely disgusting. But, you know, the Bibles that I read out of, you know, they haven't been really touched since they were translated. Um, they haven't been touched. And so I don't really think that that's a really good ground argument. Um, well, sure, but it's just a lot of this is change. still, a lot of the problem is that you don't have any, like, hard proof. So there's no way to put any of these things. Well, I guess you can't really put morals through anything. But, like... This doesn't necessarily like again, it's I'm fine with you believing this, but when your beliefs extend to hurting other people, I start to have more of an issue there. Right. So the reason I'm asking you a lot of these questions, how do you know, how do yeah. you know, how do you know, is because you really have no way to 100 percent. know. I don't know 100 percent. I don't know how I don't know if I'm if heaven or hell is real. A hundred percent. Nobody actually knows a hundred percent. Right. So there's still a slim chance that you're wrong. And on that slim chance, you're now restricting other people's freedom, other people's rights. For what? What if you're wrong? It doesn't sound like yeah. you necessarily well, know for sure that this is correct. I do know necessarily 100 percent that this is correct. Um, you know, I can give you a bunch of proofs. I mean, like. Even going over the cause and effect argument from that point forward, it's not really a matter of which God ex or not. Sorry, not that um, it's it's not necessarily does God exist. It's which God exists. Right. It's not a matter of um, finding the fact that God exists. It's finding out which so, God is the true God. Who's to right? say that the gods who let's say that you're right, that a God exists. Who's to say that yeah. that God necessarily dictates morals? So according to what we've seen, some of God command his people to do in the Bible, a lot of it seems pretty fucking immoral. I mean, some of the like laws that the, were, were there not laws at the time that uh, commanded the uh, women who were raped to marry their rapist. There were all kinds of barbaric and yeah, barbaric sort of uh, commands given to the people from God, even commands to kill. I mean, I don't think that this necessarily even if you're even if there is a God that exists, that doesn't necessarily prove that he's right at or that he's good at dictating morals god doesn't seem all yes, that 100 percent does i so mean let, let me the give Bible you an example of where god is where i would argue that god is blatantly immoral it's um the verse where god basically psychologically abuses uh abraham and tells him that he needs him to sacrifice his son and then basically so you have to think about this obviously that didn't happen right but god told them obviously i'm excuse me let me rephrase that obviously he didn't end up really killing his son but God yeah. told Abraham to do that. That is going to lead to all kinds of anguish, emotional agony. And we also have to think that if God is the all-knowing creator, he designed humans in the most intricate way. If anyone knows human psychology the best, it should be God, right? So yeah. God emotionally, mentally manipulated and abused Abraham, brought him to a point where he was about to kill his own son before God told him stop, just so he could test him to see if he really believed in him. I mean, this is this is abhorrent. So who's to say necessarily that God actually is dictating morals? He doesn't yeah, seem very moral I, I think to you're me. going on for a bit. I, I would like to answer. Um, the Bible does talk about this. It's it's. Purely the fact that God fabricated all of reality, which would also mean that he fabricated all of moral law, 
So anything he really says is righteous is righteous, and anything he says is unrighteous is unrighteous. And, you know, the Bible talks about this, how men will go about establishing their own righteousness and will think that they're right and God's wrong, that kind of a thing. Um, what this is, is you're trying to but how say is that God, God right? is unjustified here. And how is he, how is you know, he justified? I think you neglect the end of that story because um, God gives them a sacrifice to have, so? right? They're happy so at the end of it. It's fine. So if I tie up a dude – oh, really? So if I tie up a guy and I say I'm going to rape your wife, you have to watch right now. And for hours I torment him and his wife is screaming in, in fear as she thinks she's going to be abused. And although it never actually leads to it, well, they were all happy in the end, so it's all okay. That's God's ultimate Well, no, not necessarily. Like, on, that's, that's, I mean that I think like they'll be pretty fine in heaven afterwards. I mean – you know, come on. So here's here. You see why I am having this issue already. Right. Is that you're telling me LGBT people are bad and that's based on your Christian beliefs. But your Christian beliefs, yeah. what you just told me, sound really circular. Whatever God says is righteous is righteous. I don't know. I don't even know if God is real, first of all. Second of all, so far, what God has said doesn't seem very righteous by any type of standards. Like, I, I guess if you're really going to go the route that God just invents the reality, so if he says it's moral, that means it is moral. I mean, if you really want to have that level of blind, circular faith, that's fine by me. But again, not it's, circular logic at all. But it's wrong no measure. for you to use those circular and wrong beliefs to hurt other people, specifically gay it's people. It's not circular belief, man. Because the thing is, is that how is it not? We have just we have circular. something called secular history, and we also have you know biblical history. And when you have things like I, I can I can go into depth and explain this to you, the Daniel seventy weeks prophecy, but it's going to be a really really long long history lesson for you. So I'm just going to tell you that there's a load of prophecies that literally predict exact dates and exact seven year periods like that just it's right there you know 700 years before they even happen and then they happen like that in perfect immaculate How do you know accordance it happened? to the bible well, yeah i mean let's uh i'll give you the example of the daniel 70 weeks prophecy okay um there's a place called jerusalem you're probably aware of this it um it was it had to be Wait, have been were you uh, alive rebuilt. to see this prophecy happen that is completely irrelevant and that's no no not no, no. i i know it's irrelevant i'm just wondering when it happened like did the Bible say it was predicted and then the Bible also explained that it happened? No, that's not what happened. Okay. So what happened is is that um, there's three historical events that we need to jot down in our minds. There's the death of Jesus, which happened um, on the, I'm pretty sure, 30th year because— we can, uh, yeah, Let's just get to the point here. Year 30, right. And then you also have um, the rebuilding of Jerusalem happened on a certain date. Um, it— um, it was presumably a. Give me a second. Hold on. It's okay. You know, I don't. I understand that there are a list of prophecies that seemingly came true. I just that that alone still doesn't prove to me that the Bible is to dictate morals or that God should dictate morals because plenty Hold on. of the I'm things. I'm sorry. I had to. I had to. I had to move around. Um, I'm just gonna finish up explaining. Um, so basically, this place called Jerusalem, it was um, rebuilt. Okay, uh -huh. and the Bible says a, a biblical week, right? Would uh, um, it would basically mean just um, seven sevens, which um, it it was in the original translation. That's what it was, but it essentially just means um, seven years, right? So a week individually is seven years. Okay, you mean seven days? And sorry, what? Do you mean seven days, or did it say seven years at the time? Um, seven sevens, right? When it when it's refers to that in the original language, it's referred to now as weeks. Um, but they're originally referred to as sevens, and also in the Jeremiah prophecy, which um Daniel was talking about earlier on in the book or the chapter, sorry, it um it you know, it alludes to that, which was also using that as a metric for measurement of um like dating and stuff, right? So um, when it refers to that, it says 70 weeks are determined upon thy people, right? That means 490 years, okay? And um, that would mean, because it says on the 69th week, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, he, it didn't refer to him as Jesus Christ. You cut out again. You were on Jesus Christ in 69. 
that or he shall be cut off but not for himself right he shall be cut off but not for himself which would imply that the messiah he will die on this specific seven year period which is like it's it's 483 years past the rebuilding of jerusalem or it's it's seven years before that right and jesus christ dies on that seven uh year period right and so what happens here is um so essentially i'm I'm sorry i just woke up i'm i'm a little bit tired it's but, okay take um, your time but i'm i'm just this isn't this isn't proving anything to me so right no i'm a just couple... gonna explain to you how this prophecy is literally impossible without a god um, so in this prophecy, it says, from the going forth of the rebuilding of Jerusalem, um, 70 weeks are determined, right? Um, on that 69th week, the Messiah, he shall be cut off, but not for himself. If we look historically of when the rebuilding of Jerusalem was, it says, um, or if, even if we're looking at secular history, Jesus Christ die, does die on the 30th year, which was about 483 years before uh, or after, sorry, the rebuilding of Jerusalem. That kind of a historical, like, prediction, it doesn't just happen, you know. It, it's Weren't just... there a lot of predictions, though, in the Bible? So, like, like I, I'm not, so, so I'm not familiar with all the prophecies, but it's my understanding that there were a lot of them. Yeah, there was, um, well, this specific one, there's not a prophecy, if I'm not mistaken, that calls out the exact year or the exact seven-year period, about 700 years before something happens, such a crucial, like, theological detail. It doesn't, it, it wouldn't, you know, just do that. And it doesn't do that anywhere else in the Bible. And so this one's very specifically unique in that. Um, and, you know, we can look at other Old Testament prophecies that literally talk about the life of Jesus before he's born. Um, even I, in, I understand yeah. that. But again, we haven't necessarily established that, you, like, you don't actually know this because we don't even know if the Bible as a whole is correct. I look at it as a book of mainly fables. I see it as like, okay, you can maybe derive some meaning from certain stories here and there. But again, even if that were true, I've already conceded that, well, maybe there is a God, sure. But there doesn't seem to be any evidence that because there was a prophecy made, that means God is moral and we should listen to him when he says that we should uh, restrict rights from certain people, even though that's been demonstrated to be harmful well, no, to them in the real world. Well, no, if we can establish the existence of God and the fact that he... Uh... He is all. You you keep cutting out. Can make morality, and he can make objective morality. No, I re right. I re no, I actually reject that too. Because how do you how are you determining morality? For you, it's just God says so, therefore it's moral. For me, I actually I like to look at does it harm people? Is this leading to a good or a bad? Usually, I don't even think super deep about the morality of everything. My first thought is, does this do harm? And when God has repeatedly done things to his own people that do them harm, and now you're using your religion to do other people harm, I have a problem with that. So even if God well, is real, I understand even your if, point here. No, no, no. You need to hear me out here. Even if God is real, okay? I don't necessarily care. There's no evidence that God is the moral one. What you're telling me is the moral thing, according to God, is just harmful. Well, no, I would I would argue that um, you know, these these sort of things take us further away from God and therefore makes us more susceptible to being um it makes us more susceptible to going to hell. So right? LGBT stuff takes us away from God. Is that because you're cha why why is it? Is it because you're changing your body, your natural godly form or something? Here, I'll give you a um I'll give you an example in the Bible. This is referring to specific No, 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 no. I don't want No, 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 sorry. I don't want a example from the Bible right now. What I want from you is to explain how the LGBT stuff takes us away from God in our current society. Well, it would explain this. It explains this like perfectly in the Bible. I don't care about the Bible right now. I want to hear your explanation for why you think this hurts the current day. Here, I, I won't take. I won't rip this from the Bible, but I'll just tell you it. It makes us basically worship ourselves as taking precedence over God. Okay. And uh, when God tells us not to do these things, we are prioritizing ourselves. And in case you don't know, the core principle of Satanism is literally just self-worship. I am my own God. That's the core principle of it. So would this not be able to apply to uh, condemn 
like scientists or people that design medications? Um, medications aren't an exactly harmful. Neither is being neither are trans people seeking treatment. I would uh, I would argue that them being unhappy with the body that God gave them, right, is uh, yes, is, is like so, ungratefulness. Right, sure. So my question is, why don't you make this same argument for people that take antidepressants? Well, because they're not like changing their body or whatever. Yeah, they are. They're literally taking medication to change their brain chemistry. Well, the reason why that's different is because the social implications of that aren't really um, aren't really the same. Because I'm sure you're aware of this. Transgender so people tend to wait, um, wait, 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 hold on. How are the transgender social implications people do tend not? to wear? The, oh. the social implications are significantly different, and I'll explain to you how. Um, in society, trans people usually try, I would say, imitating or taking their culture and applying it to themselves right um so in the bible it's very clear about this and i brought this up um last time we talked it was a deuteronomy um it was a deuteronomy law wait i want to you keep can you hear me to a hey, woman you, if you're a man sorry could you hear me no no i know the verse you cut out there for a second but i know the i i know the verse already but let's get back to uh, the thing a second ago lgbt stuff is ungrateful because they're changing their god-given body why does the argument not apply then to people that take antidepressants you didn't say anything about social social implications um. first you're First claim was it's ungrateful because they are changing their body. Okay, I guess I can retract that statement. Um, but so then, why is it different to take what what social implications? And are... so I don't want to. I'm sorry, you keep cutting sorry, out. And you keep cutting out, and then I thought you were. I think you were done talking. My bad. Um, yeah, I'll I'll retract that prior statement. I'll uh, I'll be willing to say that. The social implications, though, are a very, very important focal part, uh, focal point for why it's immoral to be um, transgender. Because, do you have like noise gate on stress. or something? And in the Bible, your thing in the keeps Bible, cutting sorry, out. Your your thing keeps cutting out like every five seconds. Do you have Do you have noise gate on? Or are you using push to talk? No, I, I'll just use my. I'll just here. It's it should be fine now. Okay. Um. So LGBT so stuff say, takes away from God. They're, you said you were... It's in tendency sinful because they wear things that they shouldn't be wearing. Well, we already got into this too, which was a woman's clothing and a man's clothing. Those are completely arbitrary things. So was it immoral for the Scottish to wear uh, kilts? No, because those things pertain to a man. How so? Because in that kilts specific pertain... culture, those pertain to a man. So then we're back to the same thing we already had, which is then do cultural norms dictate morals? And you already said no to that. So the question the cultural then— Cultural norms? No, I don't think I said no to that. I think I was my... just trying to get to something else. Sure, but my question there would be, well, if it becomes culturally accepted or if it becomes— let's say that we start seeing dresses as completely gender neutral among our society. Now is it moral for a male to wear a dress? Um, I wouldn't say so. So why not now? Um, because I think it's important for us to distinguish uh, males from females in order to maintain a, a stable family structure in our society. But do you realize how we're all over the place and you keep saying things that then when we remove that variable, you're like, okay, well, actually, it's this thing that I'm opposed to. It's I, I understand that maybe there's more than no, one the, reason. The distinguishment but it just seems... between males and females um, clothing is is an important thing to have in society no it's not a distinguishment between males and females clothing i mean if you look at it you could make then well, okay was it immoral for women to start wearing pants back in the 1900s uh because that blurred the line if you look at it now like a, like me and my wife share hoodies clothes have certainly become more gender neutral and unisex the whole men putting on women's clothing thing in the Bible still, is super arbitrary. No, I would still say that it's really, really important for us to uh, 
for us to distinguish males and females as being different and try to make as many um I, I you would call it arbitrary but i wouldn't i would say it's important for us to make as many different stereotypes and uh deviancies between males and females as we possibly can yeah so, uh, without so was it, it like immo- disrupting the social fabric of our country okay so was it immoral for women to start wearing pants in the early 1900s they would literally get kicked out of businesses if they were wearing yeah, I pants. Would say. okay cool so then you're basically now in a position where any form of progress is seen as immoral because the current culture means that that's what's moral do you see how uh um yeah, whimsical. I can sort of see your argument, this is this is completely whimsical. My, my thing initially when I uh, was talking about the LGBTQ, it Wait, wasn't what's the... initially about transgender people. It was more or less to do with homosexuals. Yeah, but what what's the Bible verse? Right, a wise man built his house upon a rock. You should build right. your fucking beliefs on like some objective hardcore shit this right now sounds like it's immoral to put on men and women's clothing. But if society decides that it's no longer a man's clothing, then it's not immoral. But in the process of society deciding that it's now unisex that part's immoral it just sounds like it's all over the place it doesn't actually sound like there's any hard grounding here well i would say that there are certain cultural inventions like pants uh if i'm not mistaken these things were initially um for men and initially dresses and skirts and stuff like that were for females so is it immoral then for every time wait could you say that again? I would say that these cultural inventions were bound to sex from the beginning and did not really need um I but would this say it didn't really need a problem because just if then does that mean we have to apply everything that was created must still be for that exact original intent? That doesn't make any sense. No, that, no, that's not that's not exactly. Is it immoral um, to I use would... a coat hanger to unlock your car door? No. The original intent, though, was bound because to hang your Because that's not what the Bible clothing. had to say on this. It just, it sounds like there's just, there's the no Bible real grounding here, bro. The Bible doesn't say use everything for its original intent. It, it just says that about clothing and stuff like that. Yeah, but that's the, no, it doesn't say that you have to use it for its original intent. It doesn't say that. And even if it did then, by your logic, then it would be immoral every time women wear high heels. Because originally high heels were invented for men. I think high heels are overrated. So do you think when trans, pe- if trans people wear high heels, that's okay? Um, maybe I don't know. All right, man. Well, hey, I appreciate the convo, bro. But uh, no, no, no. But I, my, no, my no, no, no. Um, I, I, my, my audience is asking me to move on, and this is starting to give me a headache. I really think that if I were you, you, you know, I'm not trying to. This is going to sound condescending, no matter how I say this, but I don't mean for it to sound this way. I don't know how old you are, but if I were you, I would just rethink some of these things. Some of the beliefs you're you're citing to me sort of remind me of. Some of the beliefs that I used to hold when I was really deep in the Christian conservative sort of realm. I don't think you were deep in the Christian conservative. Mm, I was probably a lot more than you even. No, I think you were deep in the like the neoliberal, like maybe semi-Christian. Okay, sure, but either way, dude, I would just rethink some of these positions you have because it doesn't sound like there's any hard grounding at all. Well, initially, though, what I was wanting to talk about to you was um, the existence of God, right? Well, I don't want to talk to you anymore about the existence of God, and unfortunately, this conversation has made me doubt the existence of God even more. I highly doubt that. Well, I'll see you later, man. Yikes. Oh, shit. Okay. (laughs) I can be more Christian than you, Hunter. I don't know how old he was. Someone in my chat saying he's only 15, which would make sense. But you know what? That means, if anything, that's good because that means he's young. That means his positions will surely evolve and change.